Welcome to the best. This is the show where we find the best product in its category. Today, we're taking these four 13 to 14 inch laptops and putting them to the test. And we'll tell you which one is the best. We'll be looking and rating them on five different categories. Battery life, design, performance, portability, and the big one, value. To do that, we will need the help of CNET expert, Dan Ackerman. Why is Dan the man for this? Just take a look. Dan Ackerman, Senior Managing Editor. He's been with CNET for 14 years. He reviews laptops, tablets, PC gaming, and more. Dan's love of tech goes beyond his areas of expertise. He's the author of The Tetris Effect. He is also currently obsessed with 3D printers. Dan has been into tech for so long that his first PC got online using an acoustic coupler and a rotary phone. Welcome aboard, Dan. Great to be here. Thank you for the video, very nice. Yeah, it was hard to make you look good, but we did it. Thank you, I appreciate it. And I worked really hard to pick out four really great laptops for us to talk about, all in that 13, 14 inch range you wanna carry around with you every day. I have got Apple's 13 inch MacBook Air. I've got the Dell XPS 13. I've got the Razer Blade Stealth, and I have the Acer Swift 7. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is how they all do with battery life. Now these devices are really different from each other. How exactly do you even the playing field to make sure your battery results are accurate? Well, it's simple. What we do is we figure out the same test, we run it the same way on all these machines. Mm -hmm. For laptops, what we do is we stream an HD video from a private server, and we see how long the laptop runs until it, until it dies, until the battery dies. And this taxes the uh, Wi-Fi antenna, the screen, video decoding. So you're hitting it pretty hard. So you get a good idea of how long this thing will run continuously if you're on a cross-country flight or you're working in an office all day. Uh, so you know that it's not gonna conk out right at the wrong second. All right, what did your tests find out? Well, what we found out was, and you're not gonna be surprised to hear this, that the MacBook, out of these laptops at least, was the longest lasting. I think the MacBook ran for 600 and 46 minutes, uh, which is you know more than 10 hours. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty good. Apple's usually near the top of these, not in every category, but especially the MacBook Air size laptop. Behind that was actually this little guy, the Swift 7, and that was 590 minutes, which is almost six hours, not quite. Uh, behind that was the Dell XPS 13, that's 509 minutes. And then in last place, 409 minutes for the Razer Blade Stealth, which is a pretty powerful laptop, as is this. So if you were gonna rank these, you know, this is pretty easy. This is just by the numbers here. Uh, if you had points to give them, you'd go four, and then you'd go three, and then two, and then one. Uh, when it comes to the subjective, objective, uh, this is pretty objective. Thanks, Dan. Let's go to design. We're going to judge a book by its cover, which laptop turns heads which one feels right? That's so highly subjective, so we wanted to know what you thought. We also turned to our social channels to find out which one you think looks the best. Let's see what happens. Right off the bat, I do love the space gray or whatever the hell this apple color is. I like the speakers, I like the color, I like that it has rounded corners. Let's take a look at the, the Acer here. Very light, actually. The glider in the air. This thing is super light. I like this. I really like the size of the keypad. It's very large. I feel like we're gonna bend this at some point too. If I open that, and like if I open and close that too much. Oh, and it has a weird pop-up camera. I don't like that. The camera placement makes no sense. That's a weird place to put a camera. So is this like looking up my nose? This one's cool. Little generic, the Razer one. This one's a little bulky. A lot bigger than I would expect a laptop to feel like. Ooh, wait, it changes colors. This is a disco computer. Feels pretty uh, hefty and strong. Doesn't feel cheap. The Dell, I like that it's trying to be different with the, the kind of like textured pattern on the keyboard and like the mouse pad. Kind of like the texture on it. It's I don't know, something I don't see very often. It has really nice thin bezels, so that's a big plus. Fairly standard. Doesn't seem too heavy, but this one seems pretty cool. But for some reason, doesn't this look old? Like something you'd have five years ago? We've got our social poll up. The MacBook was in first with 51% of the votes here. The Dell XPS 25%, the Razer's 18, and the Acer Swift all the way in the basement with just 6% of the votes. Dan, you're the expert. How do you rank these on design? Well, I'm gonna tell you. The people have spoken. However, the people are wrong. 
Okay, this is very simple. Best looking one right here is the Dell. Uh, white is very cool. Almost an edge to edge screen there, no bezel, fantastic. The MacBook's okay, but it's really the same design they've had on MacBook Pros for years. But you know what, I'll give them a little, I'll give them a little credit there. Razer does a very nice laptop, but a couple parts of it look and feel a little bit dated. They've gotten better about the screen bezels, I get it. Uh, and uh, last place, this uh, Acer Swift, because it's so thin, it's so light, there's not a lot of room for experimentation and making it look cool. I can't wait to see what people say about the people are wrong. So we're gonna see how that turns out. So here's how I'm gonna use all the data. Dan gets one vote, everyone else gets one as well. So after putting all that together, the Acer is in the cellar earning one point. The Razer Blade Stealth gets two points. The MacBook Air and the Dell both earn four points apiece. After two rounds, the MacBook Air is the leader with eight points. The Dell XPS 13 is in second with six points. The Acer's in third with four. That means the Razer Blade Stealth is in last place with just three points. I think it's time to talk about portability. To kick off portability, we got our trusty scale. Let's start weighing some laptops. Let's start with the MacBook Air. MacBook Air, always very thin, very light. So we've got two pounds, 11 ounces. All right, I'm gonna put down two pounds. 11 ounces, always a very traditional, super lightweight laptop to carry around. Uh, the MacBook still two pounds, 11 ounces. It's not that light anymore. Let's check out the Dell XPS 13. This one feels a little heftier. It's dense. It's got a dense feeling when you pick it up. That's also two pounds, 11 ounces. Okay. You know, it is very small. And you're right, I think dense is the right word for this because it does weigh the same as the MacBook, but it's just distributed differently. It's got a smaller footprint just by a little bit. All right, now we've got the Razer Blade Stealth. And Razer is best known for making gaming laptops, so their things are usually very big. This is the exception, the small one. Two pounds, 14 ounces. So almost, almost three pounds. 14 ounces, very good. Then there's the Acer Swift 7. Whoa, this thing is light. It feels like a mock-up. It feels like a little plastic mock-up somebody made of what a laptop should look like. Definitely feels that way. All right, I want you to weigh that, but I want you to give me a guess first. Okay, I'd say this feels more like a, almost like a tablet. I'd say around a pound. Okay, that, that's ambitious. We're not quite at that point yet, but, but take a look and we'll compare it to these three guys who are all more than, you know, two and a half pounds. Okay, one pound, 13 ounces. And that's a huge jump from these guys. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I love this laptop so much. It's also super thin. It is less than 10 millimeters thick. It's about, about nine millimeters thick, but uh, that's a magic line very few laptops get to cross. People think about thinness a lot, and these companies, they really brag about how thin their laptops are, but trust me, you will take lighter over thinner any day of the week. They're both good, but lighter makes more uh, sense in the long run, especially if you've got this thing in a shoulder bag or a backpack, you're carrying it around with you. Uh, I found this super thin Acer to be really great, but using it on the road for about a week, uh, the design was so slimmed down, I had a hard time moving the screen without accidentally touching the touch screen, and I kept accidentally uh, triggering the touchpad because there's no wrist rest on it. All right, we weighed them, we tried them out, let's rank them. Let's go by the numbers right here, obviously very clear favorite. Four points right here to the Acer. These two guys are tied, so you know what? Two points each, boom and boom. Uh, just a little bit heavier, the Razer uh, just gets one point. Uh, there you go. Let's move on to performance, shall we? People who care about power care about performance. Dan, you ran a bunch of tests. What'd you find out? What we do is we run benchmark tests that measure different things that the laptops can do. And in some tests, our pal the Dell came in first. In other tests, the Razer came in first. So I decided to split the difference and just say, hey, four points for you and four points for you. Uh, behind them was the MacBook Air, which gets a very nice two in last place is our pal the Acer, and there's a good reason for that. It's so thin, it's so light. Uh, the, re the reason why they're able to get it so tiny and keep the battery life pretty good is because it's got a Y-series processor, a much lower power consumption processor than these other guys. So performance-wise, it's not gonna be in the same class, but I'm gonna tell you a little secret. What's that? It doesn't really matter that much. What are you doing on your laptop? You're online, you're going to Facebook, you're streaming Netflix movies, you're shopping on Amazon, it's all browser stuff, it's all the same. Here's where we stand. The Dell and MacBook Air are tied with 12 points. The Acer has nine points. The Razer gained some ground in this round, but is in last place with eight points. It's make or break time, the deciding element, the final factor, value. Dan, what do we mean by value? It's that intangible sense that you're getting a good deal. It's not the least expensive thing, which could be underpowered, you're not gonna like it. It's not the fanciest thing, because that's probably very expensive and probably more bells and whistles than what you really need. It's that magic point where the price 
and what it does for you come together and you go, this is where I wanna spend my money, I feel good about what I did. Now, I want you to keep something in mind. A lot of these laptops are very configurable. So you could start at one price, add some extra memory or a better processor or some other you know, extra features and they could cost a lot more. So I'm gonna show you the prices of these as we tested them, but we can also talk a little bit about, about the starting prices. Now this Acer down here, this guy, it's not cheap. He's $16.99 and you're really paying for that engineering that gets it down to under, under two pounds. The razor blade stealth, well, you know what? That's even crazier. That's $18.99. And again, it's a very powerful laptop in a slim body and it looks really nice. Uh, the Dell is as configured $17.99 and we are gonna come back to that number because that tells us a lot about what we need to know. And the MacBook Air, when we got this MacBook Air, the starting price was $11.99. Apple's just updated it with a true tone display and dropped the price to $10.99 but it's still pretty much the same, doesn't really change our math. Yeah, speaking of starting prices, like you said, these things are configured so you can test them out, so hopefully they get glowing reviews, that's why they're set up this way. Tell me about the starting prices for some of the other ones. Right, now, if you're looking at battery life, it's probably gonna be roughly the same no matter how you configure these. If you like the design, that's pretty much the same. Performance, storage space, those are the big things that change as you, as you change the configuration. The Dell, very expensive, but you can get this Dell starting at, I think a very nice $899. Now you're not gonna get the 4K touchscreen and the higher end processor for that, but you do get the excellent design, the fact that they move the webcam back up to the top of the screen where it belongs, the super thin bezel, uh, all of that in the base model, and you can you know, spend a couple hundred bucks, not all the way up to $1,800, just to get a better processor in there, and I think that's a really good value. I'm gonna give this four. Uh, MacBook Air, it's a good investment. You buy one as a freshman, it's gonna last you till you're a senior. I'm gonna give you three right there. Now, I like the Acer a lot, but frankly, it's a lot of money for something that has that Y series processor, is not super powerful. You may feel it's a little sluggish if you're using it all day, every day as your main laptop. I'm gonna give it a two. The Razer, you're really paying a lot for design and engineering. It's got the same parts as these other guys, but frankly, it's just so much more expensive and it's not one of their gaming laptops either. Uh, it's just a regular, you know, everyday work laptop. So I got to give Razer, even though they do a very nice job with these, I got to give it the one. And these are all really great laptops. Even the worst of the best is still pretty good. But we've got to pick the best of the best, correct? So for our final totals, the Razer Blade Stealth comes in last place with nine points. The Acer Swift 7 is in third place with 11 points. So the best laptop is... The Dell XPS 13 with a total of 16 points. It beat the MacBook Air by just one point. It's got a great design with small bezels. It's lightweight while providing good performance and battery life. You can configure the XPS 13 to your heart's delight and it starts at a relatively low price. Big thanks to Dan Ackerman, everyone who voted on design and you great viewers. Let us know what you think of the results. Your voice is important. From all of us here, we wish you the best.